Hi folks and welcome back to another tutorial. This is going to be a quick one, just walking you through how to get started using the Gaussian Beam Shaders Pack that I just released on Gumroad. So in the asset file, you have a beam object. It currently has a shader called Gaussian Beam Shader applied, which allows you to create realistic Gaussian beams using volumetrics. So the setup for the shader system is really simple. It's just basically texture coordinates and mapping plugged into the Gaussian beam shader. And inside that node, there's just some math going on to plot the equation for Gaussian beams. If you want to see how that works, go check out part one of this two part of video where I walk you through how to create the shader setup. So essentially you have two options. You have the regular Gaussian beam shader and the pulsed Gaussian beam shader. The regular one is just to create a continuous Gaussian beam with independent control of things like the radial length. So you can make the radial length really, really small but you can make it very large. And so that will control the distance over which the beam narrows to its beam waist. Just bear in mind though, that if you make the radial length really small, you'll find that the beam basically crops out if the object containing this beam is too small. The Gaussian beam is created entirely using shaders. So the actual shape of the beam has nothing to do with the beam profile, but it does limit the, the space over which the beam can be plotted. So if you find that the beam is clipping, and so you just need to crank up the radius of that object so you can see the full radial extent of that beam. Beam radius, W0, just allows you to control the, the waist at the narrowest point. And finally, the intensity is just how bright the beam is. And you can also control the emission color to make whatever jazzy Gaussian beam you wish. The second node that I've provided is the pulsed Gaussian beam shader. And again, if you want to use that instead, you just need to plug that into the volume socket. What that does is give you the ability to create pulses along the Gaussian beam. So if you ever working in a set of like transient absorption spectroscopy, where you have specific pulses of light that come in, you might want to use this option. The same controls for the regular Gaussian beam shader are here as well. The radial length, the beam waist, and the total intensity. In addition to that though, you have controls to control this pulsing effect. So the pulse periodicity just controls the spacing between the pulses. And then the pulse resolution basically defines the clip off between the individual pulses. And finally, phase offset just allows you to shift all of the pulses along the beam if you ever wanted to animate pulse traversing through your setup. So those are the two basic shaders. You might notice that the Rayleigh length and total intensity aren't really physical parameters that you can control in real life. They're set by other parameters. And so there is an optional node up here, which I've called input conversion, which you can plug in to the Gaussian beam shaders and actually toggle the parameters that you might be able to control in real life. So things like wavelength, beam waste, refractive index, and power. These are all parameters or variables that you would either control or know in an experiment. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And the way you would do that is you would literally just one-to-one -one plug in these values. And so now I can do things like control the wavelength to control the color. I can also look at the effect of changing the refractive index. Obviously beam waste is fairly self-explanatory. One thing to note is that this is an object created from splines. So obviously I can extrude out the spline and the beam will just follow and extend following the equation. So you don't need to do much else. However, you will run into problems if you start to make this beam uh, have more than one axis of direction. So let's say I take one of the vertices of that spline and I extrude that into the Y direction. You can see that the beam doesn't follow that extruded part of the beam. And that is because the coordinate system for this object doesn't track with the spline. And so should you ever want to start creating funky beam paths, like this, you will need to give this shader a different set of coordinates that track with the spline. There are some very good tutorials already on YouTube on how you can achieve that. But besides that, that is basically it for how to get started on using this shader. If you found this video useful, please leave a like and a comment, especially if you have any questions or comments about future videos. Otherwise, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.